Hi everyone, welcome to our beginning of our chapter on ideal gases. So we are going to try and uh, derive some kind of an equation, it's called an equation of state, um, uh, for an ideal gas. Um, so what does experimental work show us? Well, it says that uh, for, and I'm going to write this out explicitly, for fixed mass of gas, right? So you don't, you're going to hold the mass of a gas constant. Um, what uh, at temperatures well above uh, their liquefaction temperature, so any temperature that you know at which they condense to form a liquid, uh, we find the following relationships, and it uh, works for quite a wide range of pressures also. So we have a few relationships um, that that we find. So first of all, we'll see that at uh, constant uh, temperature, so at constant temperature, we find that pressure of this gas is inversely proportional to the volume. And this is sometimes referred to as Boyle's law. And, you know, it's named after the, the physicist that uh, discovered it. Um, another way that you can write this equation is that P1 times V1 is equal to P2 times V2. So at a certain pressure, whatever volume you have if you multiply the two together is going to be the same as the, the product of the pressure and volume at another uh, another point. Um, so what else uh, do we know about uh, uh, experimental data? Well, we find that at uh, constant pressure, so we were holding temperature constant before, now we're going to hold temp uh, pressure constant. So we find that the volume of the gas is proportional to the temperature of this gas. So this is referred to as Charles law. Again, after the physicist who discovered it first. Um, another way that you could write this equation basically is that V1 upon T1 is equal to, v, is equal to V2 upon T2. So what this person, Charles, what he found was that he, he tested a few different, um, you know, uh, temperatures and uh, found out what the volume of this particular gas was. But what he found was he, you know, he had a relationship that looked uh, something like this, where you have temperature here and you have volume here, right? And he had, he had a proportionality kind of relationship. That's what the data was that he saw. But interestingly, what, what he then discovered was you know, he couldn't go beyond this point because uh, of uh, the kind of the limitations of the experiments that he had available to him. Uh, but what he discovered was if you kept on extending this back, basically, if you extrapolated it back down this way, right, and you put the x axis there, this seems to cross for some reason at negative 273 degrees Celsius. So this was an interesting little finding that, uh, that he came up with. Uh, so essentially, he's finding that the graph of the volume against the temperature is a straight line. And, you know, the gases are going to liquefy when the temperature gets reduced. So that's really why he couldn't, um, he could not, uh, he could not uh, actually find this uh, data uh, experimentally. Uh, but if you project the graph backwards, you have this crossover effect at negative 273 degrees. Celsius. So let's come back to that one. Let's put a pin in that one for now, but we'll come back to it because that's an important finding. Uh, the third uh, thing that I want to point out is this, there was a, another, uh, there's a French uh, uh, physicist named uh, uh, Gay-Lussac. He found that at uh, constant, at constant uh, volume, so now he's holding the volume constant, right? At a constant volume, he found that pressure was proportional to temperature. So he probably put the gas in a confined space, so the volume doesn't change, and he increased the temperature, and he was like, oh, okay, well, the temperature, the pressure of this uh, gas seems to be increasing. So another way you can write this is basically P1 divided by T1 is equal to P2 divided by T2. And he also found a very interesting thing. And what he found, and I'm going to use a different color to denote this, uh, he found that if you project, if you, if, you, if you kind of plot this out, and I'm going to replace this here, instead of the pressure, let's call it, uh, instead of the volume, let's say on the same graph, we try and plot pressure, right? And I'm just using some dummy numbers here, but uh, he probably saw a relationship that looks something like this, right? 
and he was able to kind of extra, extra, extrapolate it back towards the same point uh, uh, on the x-axis. And he was like, oh, well, I am also getting minus 273 degrees as this uh, crossover point. So at this point, uh, you know, um, the temperature is such that there is no pressure. So what does that mean? This is an important finding, minus 273 degrees, right? And we'll talk about this a little bit in chapter 11 when we talk about the thermodynamic scale of temperature and we talk about the idea of an absolute zero. But for now, just bear this in mind that this, this uh, negative 273 seems to be a really um, interesting place that we wanna land, uh, land at, right? Um, in, in terms of uh, looking at uh, temperature behavior of, uh, of matter. So now that we have a bunch of things here, we have this formula here, we have this formula here, and we have this formula here. And I apologize, I should actually write this out as I was saying, this was called, this right here is called law of pressures. So you have Boyle's, Charles, and law of pressures. Um, so you have these three uh, very interesting relationships. Can we combine them into one equation? It's a little bit cumbersome to look at all three together, right? Can we combine them into one? Well, it turns out we can, so let's take a look. So I would just basically also say to you that the, uh, the, if you hold a gas at constant pressure and constant temperature, so at constant P and T, you, you know, the volume of the gas is gonna be dependent on its mass. That makes sense, right? Uh, like, I mean, the more you have of something and the pressure and the temperature hasn't changed, the volume has to increase. So if you combine this with the three relationships that we looked at uh, on the previous slide, you're gonna basically see that you have P times V is proportional to the mass of the gas times the temperature. Or what you can then say is, well, P times V is equal to some kind of a constant A times mass times temperature. That's a constant of proportionality, A. So this is not a very useful way of expressing the relationship, right? Because if you think about it, this constant A is gonna have different values for different gases. So we need to find a way to include the quantity of the gas. And the way that you can do this is to express this fixed mass of the gas in, uh, in uh, Charles's law and Boyle's law and the law of pressures in terms of the number of moles of the gas that are present. So how do you do this? Well you want to kind of then say that, can I turn this into, uh, into the number of moles? Instead of using kilograms or something, I'm going to use number of moles. All right. So number of moles, the beauty part of that is when you say number of moles, it will have the same number of particles, uh, no matter what the gas is. That's what brings everything to a head that like the, the, the this, this proportionality constant here is going to be the same for every gas. So, if you do that, if, if instead of N, you write, uh, M, you write N, right? And you have temperature, and you have these same guys coming in here again, that's pressure times volume, equals some kind of a constant. We call that constant R. So what is, the, what is R? Uh, R is referred to as the molar, sometimes it's called molar, sometimes it's called universal gas constant. And it is in fact, universal. It is probably one of the most important uh, constants that you're going to come across in uh, your studies. Any Anybody who wants to be an engineer, mechanical or chemical, uh, like, yeah, you, you got to know how thermodynamics works. And this right here is the first step along the way. Um, so the, the, the molar gas constant is going to have the same uh, volume, I beg your pardon, the same magnitude for, for every, um, every uh, object uh, that you see here. Uh, every material that you see, so it's going to be 8.31 times, um, 8.31 joules per Kelvin. Um, and uh, I beg your pardon, it's going to be per mole as well, joules per mole per Kelvin. Um, so you have this equation that we can write. It's a very elegant equation. And PV equals NRT, and that becomes your ideal gas law. I want you to understand one thing. This is an idealized situation. This is an ideal gas. It is not a real gas. What do I mean by this? Real gases like hydrogen or helium or oxygen will follow this equation at room temperature 
and room pr uh, and, and normal atmospheric pressure. However, if you increase the pressure greatly, so the particles come very close to each other, or if you decrease the temperature greatly, again, if the particles come very close to each other, then they will no longer behave in this way because when the particles get close to each other, you're gonna have other kind of interacting forces coming into play. So the, the key part is you, you have to say this, this one is, um, this, is, this is an ideal gas law which a, which, which a gas is going to uh, behave at, at uh, normal temperatures and pressures. Or you can say room temperature and pressure. That's, that's fine also. Normal means something else. So room, I think, is like 20 degrees and normal is, for some reason, zero degrees. So that's, the, the, I, I would say that for approximate calculations, the ideal gas equation can be used with real gases if the gas is well above the temperature at which uh, it would liquefy, right? So well above liquefaction temperature. And not high, the pressure is not high. Um, let's work through an example just to drive this point home. So let's take an example where you have 58 milligrams of oxygen at a pressure of one times 10 to the five pascals, so very close to atmospheric pressure. And its uh, temperature is uh, 20 degrees uh, Celsius, so room temperature. So what is the volume of the gas at this point? So one thing I want to start you off with is, well, you want to, you can't use the Celsius or the Fahrenheit scale here. You have to express temperature uh, on uh, uh, in, in, in Kelvins. So Kelvins, the way you find out is you basically take, uh, you know, the Celsius uh, temperature and you add 273 to it. That's our, you know, the number we came up with before 273. And I'll explain the significance of that in uh, the uh, in, in chapter 11, but for now, just go with it, that you have to add the Celsius temperature, you have to add 273 to the Celsius temperature uh, to get the temperature in Kelvins. So in this case, the temperature in Kelvins is gonna be 20 plus 273, which is equal to 293 Kelvin, and we denote Kelvin with a K. Uh, so now oxygen obviously forms, uh, you know, diatomic molecules. So there's two atoms of oxygen in every, every uh, molecule of, um, uh, two, two atoms of oxygen in every molecule of uh, uh, the oxygen gas. Uh, so what is the mass of one mole? One mole of uh, O2 mass. That's going to be quite simply 2 times 16, which is the relative atomic mass of uh, one atom of oxygen. And that turns out to be 32 grams. So the N, which is the number of moles, is going to be 48 times 10 to the minus three kilograms, I beg your pardon, grams, divided by 32 grams. So this is grams and the grams, and this cancels out, so it's just a ratio, right? So this comes out to be 1.5 1 times 10 to the negative three moles. So if we take the ideal gas equation and rearrange it, we're gonna get from PV equals NRT, we can write V equals NRT upon pressure. and if you work that out and put in 8.31 there for the universal gas constant and put in the Kelvin scale temperature, 293, divided by the pressure, one times 10 to the five, you will find that your volume is equal to 3.7 times 10 to the negative five cubic meters. It's a small amount of gas. So that brings us to the end of this video. Uh, in our next uh, uh, chapter, we're gonna talk about uh, kinetic uh, theory of gases. Uh, so I wanna talk to you a little bit about that, uh, and that will bring us uh, close to the end of uh, uh, chapter 10. So I'll see you in the next video.